right, we are live. Hello, hello. I hope everyone's having an awesome, let's see if I can get on here, <laughs> an awesome, what is this? Wednesday. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it's already Wednesday. Um, I apologize for being late. I had a client call me a little bit long and then Mike called me and told me that he picked up our two babies. So we're getting six of them, we decided. Um, I'll tell you guys all more details later, but I want to be cooking. Uh, so today we're doing black bean pasta. Originally it's going to be like a Mexican inspired black bean pasta. Hey Christy. Um, but I got in my refrigerator and I had frozen my cilantro. So we're going to change it up. We're going to do like a pasta primavera. So I'll show you guys what we have um, kind of to work with and then we'll dive right in. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Kate Horning. I'm a chef. I'm a nutritionist. I'm the creator of the Healthy Passion, which is a meal planning software designed for busy women to make it super easy for you to plan out your week, stay on track, know what to eat um, and cook family friendly meals everyone will love. Um, it also works really well with carb cycling. So for those of you in this group who are wanting to start carb cycling, definitely check out A Healthy Passion if you need help with what to eat, how to cook. Um, I wrote an email today all on how to really just cook if you don't like to cook, how to get started with it. So um, if you guys are on my list, look out for that as well. So also quick reminder, our next round of trim, our eight week nutrition fitness group program starts on Monday, May 11th. Um, and if you guys are looking for more structure, more guidance, um, trim gives you step by step how to incorporate carb cycling, how to reach your goals. Um, you get nutrition paired with workouts, paired with accountability, daily nutrition checks. Uh, it's a great program and you can get all the information on my banner at the top of the page. So, okay. So black bean pasta. The reason why I love it is because, um, it is going to be low carb and high fiber. So today's a, a regular macro day in trim bootcamp world, but, um, I'm making this anyways because I don't know, I wanna show you guys how to do it. So, um, but this is a great low carb recipe. Um, each portion has 35 grams of carbs, but 15 grams of fiber. So that's only um, 20 grams of net carbs. So it's, it's really good if you're vegetarian and you need something that's gonna be higher in protein. Um, it's really good if you just want something besides meat to kind of get in on a low carb day. So we're gonna start with um, boiling the pasta. So I've got just water here and I'll go ahead and turn it around a little bit. And we're gonna add some salt. I add about a tablespoon of salt or so to my pasta water because this is the only time you're gonna be able to really flavor the pasta itself is by seasoning the water. And then we're gonna do two portions of our pasta. For a healthy passion, every recipe is um, done in two portions. So that's just how whenever I cook, I make two or six. It makes it really easy. So if you're cooking for yourself, um, AHP is great because it just has one portion of leftovers. If you're cooking for a family, you can easily scale that. So the black bean pasta is going to go in and I'm going to measure it out. So one and a half cups. And I just got this at Trader Joe's. You can get it. Ooh, my dog just ate that. <laughs> um, you can get it at um, like your Kroger or any sort of grocery store. Um, they'll have like fettuccine or other shapes, but I just thought the rotini was fun. So those are going to boil. Let's see. Eight to ten minutes is what it says. So I'm going to kind of keep an eye on it around six. I like to kind of under um, boil my pasta until it's al dente versus overcooking it and getting it mushy. Okay, so while that's happening, I'm going to turn on my stove to medium heat, my front burner here. So we're going to do something more primavera style, which is essentially um, some springtime vegetables in like a butter white wine sauce. So I'm going to skip the white wine and just do lemon, but I'm using um, some yellow onion, a little bit of bell pepper, some zucchini, which is more of a summer veggie, tomatoes cherry tomatoes, and then garlic, lemon, um, Kerrygold butter, salt, and red pepper flakes. So pretty simple, but um, all should be really delicious when it all comes together. So the first thing we're going to start with is our onion. I'm just going to use half of this onion because it's pretty big. All the healthy pasta recipes call for a small onion, but um, this one's like obnoxiously large. And you know, the key to Cooking a lot of different vegetables together is in the order that you cook them in. So you always want to start with things like onion first because it's going to be heartier. And then the last thing we're going to add is the tomatoes because those are kind of more delicate and light. Oh my goodness, they're peeping! Oh my goodness, you guys want to see my chicks real quick? hearty vegetables first that way they don't break down if you start with things like tomatoes you'll end up with the tomatoes being mushy and the onions will be raw no, no. so I'm going to start with about a half tablespoon of olive oil in the pan 
since we're using butter, I don't want to go too crazy with the oil. Um, so a nice drizzle will do. And then if you guys want to cut an onion really easily, I'm going to put that away, but um, you just want to put your hand on top of the onion, push down, kind of give that pressure. Hold your knife like this, cut it three quarters of the way through, and then same thing here, and then here. And that's just a really quick way to kind of dice up your onion. Uh-oh, we'll have all. <laughs> My dogs are like, what is going on? Okay, so onion goes in, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and add my salt right away. And salt's gonna help to draw out the moisture of the onion and really help it to soften versus to kind of fry. So I always like to add my salt right away. The next thing is gonna be our bell pepper. Bell pepper's nice and hearty, so we're gonna add those second. The easiest way to do a bell pepper is to take it and kind of cut the cheeks off, as I call them. And this makes it so much easier if you're not pulling out seeds, you're not dealing with any of that, you're literally just kind of cutting around the core and then of course discarding it. And then again, we're going to kind of dice everything out. So you want nice sized pieces. You don't want your veggies to be too small, but you want to be able to get a good bite with everything in there. So when you're cutting it, you want to think about what the bite's going to be like. If everything's too big, you're only going to be able to get one vegetable at a time. If everything's too small, it's going to kind of get lost. So the way we're cutting everything is really going to give us kind of that perfect bite with everything in it. Okay, so the pepper is going in. And you'll notice I'm adding the zucchini last before the tomatoes because zucchini will break down if it gets cooked for too long. So again, we want to add it third. So dice the bell pepper. And you can use any color bell pepper. I just like the contrast of the red, the orange, the green. To me, it just feels very fresh in springtime. Okay, and then zucchini. Cut the top and bottom off. Kind of cut it into quarters here. <gasps> Hi, baby. Oh my goodness, they are so cute. Hold on. Can you see it? <laughs> Is it trying to fly away? No. The lamp fell off. Uh-oh. Oh my goodness, you guys. I'm going to be so unproductive the next... I don't know how long until these little babies go outside, I guess. Okay, so again, best way to do it is kind of cut it down into quarters and then just kind of run your knife through. And one of the things that I find a lot of ladies tell me is the reason why they don't cook is because it takes a lot of time. But really, if you just simplify what you're eating, it doesn't have to take a lot of time. You don't have to have a starch, a protein, you know, a, a, a fat. Like, you don't have to do everything separate. You can make it all kind of one, one meal together. Okay. And with black bean pasta, it can go from good to yucky really quickly. So keep a close eye on it. Okay. Right. So I'm going to let that all kind of saute. And go ahead and add the garlic. So we're going to do three cloves of garlic. Because to me, primavera is butter and garlic, essentially. That's like the two main components that really stick out. So three cloves of garlic. Give it a whack. Peel around. And then you're just going to hold this little root end. Tip of the knife on the board. And nice thin slices here. Again, we're slicing our garlic thin because we don't want it to burn. If you have a tendency to mince your garlic, it can be really easy. Especially because this is going to cook for a little bit for your garlic to burn and turn really bitter on you and that just doesn't taste good. So not only is it easier to cut it like this, but I do find that it really helps to make sure that that garlic is protected. Um, also I find that when you cut it like this, it has a larger surface area. So it tends to really infuse good garlic flavor into the dish versus sort of getting lost. So even if you don't burn your garlic, it's really easy. If you cut it too small, to kind of get lost in the dish. And to me, like that nice big garlic flavor is what we're looking for. Hey Peggy, hey Lauren. Peggy, I just showed my two baby chicks. We picked up two, what are, what are the names of them? Speckled Warringtons or Orbingtons? Um, they're not buff Orbingtons, I wanted buff ones, but we got some, I can't remember, little Orbington babies. We've got four more waiting to hatch. Okay, so then I'm just gonna let this all saute. Let again, all those flavors to sort of come together. At this point I'm gonna add some red pepper flakes I'm also going to turn the heat up just a touch because, again, I don't want to wait any longer. If you do turn the heat up on your food, just keep a close eye on it, but you can get away with cooking things a little faster. So while that's happening, I'm going to check the pasta again. Buff. No, they're not buff. Buff they're, or orange or yellow. Oh, no, they don't have any buff. Yeah. They're something, partridge or, or what do you Buff hens. 
I'm going to start partridge. Okay. Okay. So the pasta is al dente. Again, to the tooth. When you bite into it, there's a little bit of a resistance, but it's still tender. So I'm going to drain that off. I'm going to drain my pasta. I just like to keep it without putting it back in the pan because I find sometimes it can stick, especially, again, these gluten-free pastas. And then I'm going to quarter my tomatoes. And similar to like I did with the pasta salad, and I'm doing about a cup. Um, I love the, the kind of contrast of the cooked veggies with the raw. So we're going to leave these tomatoes and just add them in right at the end so that the pan sort of keeps them through. They're not going to cook. What I find with cooking tomatoes is sometimes, again, you're going to kind of create that sauce and it can make everything mushy. And especially with the gluten-free pastas or the black bean pastas, you really want to be careful because everything can get mushy really quickly. Goodness. Give that a stir. Keep cutting tomatoes. So this is really easy. Once you kind of get going, it's just kind of tossing stuff in and letting it all cook. So the last thing we're going to do when the vegetables are nice and tender is go ahead and get that lemon zest, that lemon juice and butter in. Then we'll add the pasta and toss it all together and that is it. So really, really simple. Um, my take on Primavera, if you guys are subscribers for a healthy passion, there is a Primavera pasta in there that is so tasty with uh, regular noodles, but uh, for a regular macro day, it's great because it's got tons of veggies, tons of fiber, um, and again, it's super tasty, so definitely check that one out. Okay, so there's our tomatoes, about a cup. Let me give my veggies one more stir here, and I'm going to grab my zester. Hopefully tomorrow will be normal. I know yesterday I switched up what I was making. Today I switched things up again. So I think tomorrow will hopefully be um, General So's tofu, which I've had a lot of requests for tofu. So it'll be a fun one. And with Primavera, you want to keep everything from getting too far cooked. So you want things to have nice texture. So I think that looks pretty good. Um, again, you can see a little bit of caramelization and color on the veggies, but not crazy. Hey, Brittany. Okay, so I'm going to add my lemon zest. This would be another one where lemon peel would be delicious as well, which I've taught you guys before, where you just peel the lemon and thinly slice it. But this one is a little soft, so I'm going to go zesting it here. But all the, all the zest, ugh, all of the zest is the lemon. So the entire lemon, you, know, you want a lot of flavor. With that garlic and the lemon, it's going to be so good. And then the juice of half. So let's see if I can find my lemon juicer. And the juice of the other half, the whole lemon, and then a tablespoon of Kerrygold butter. A generous tablespoon, so I do more like a tablespoon and a half. And this is going to create the sauce. And what I find is the butter sort of cuts the lemon and makes it from being too strong and too acidic. And then we're going to add our pasta in. And again, you can see how it already started to stick. That's why you want to be really careful with putting it back into the pan. I'm just going to kind of let that coat, let the sauce coat everything, turn off the heat. And then I would finish this with fresh parsley, but I was also running a little bit behind, so I didn't have time to go out in my garden. Um, but a little bit of fresh parsley, and there you guys have it. Really quick, really simple. Black bean. Can you guys see that? Pasta. Primavera. Give it a taste, make sure it doesn't need any salt or anything, but it looks pretty good. And again, you want to try to get a little bite of everything. Mm. Wow. A little more red pepper flakes for me, but. That year is so good. This would be a good one, again, for a low carb day. Kind of change things up. It is going to be a little bit higher in net carbs than some of the other dishes that I would recommend on low carb days. You want to kind of pre-plan, make sure you can fit it in, but great source of protein, great source of fiber, um, 15 minutes and packed full of veggies. So if you guys want more information, <laughs> I'm still eating, um, on a healthy passion, just go to ahealthypassion.com 
and I'll see y'all tomorrow, 5 p.m. Uh, we're cooking up tofu. So have a great day, everybody.